Well, halfway through 2023, and reporting on the safe and effective vaccines is finally starting to drop at the speed of science. But not surprisingly with mainstream media. After all, no one wants to piss off their biggest advertisers. Looks like scientists have uncovered startling evidence that a substantial portion of the batches of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine deployed in the European Union may have in fact consisted of placebos and that the German regulator knew this and did not subject them to quality control testing. Big Pharma and regulators dropped the ball? Who could have thunk it, huh? The scientist, Dr. Gerard Dyker, professor of organic chemistry at the Ruhr University Bochum and Dr. Georg Mastic, professor of analytical chemistry at the University of Leipzig, are part of a group of five German-speaking scientists who have been publicly raising questions about the quality and safety of the BioNTech vaccine, as it is known in Germany for the last year and a half. Oh, those miscontents. They recently appeared on the Punkt Pradovic online program of the German journalist Malena Perdovic to discuss the batch variability. Their starting point was the recent Danish study showing enormous variation in the adverse events associated with different batches of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, or BNT162B2, per its scientific code name. Sounds harmless when you read it that way. In the Danish study, you'll find graphs that illustrate this variation, and I've put it in the notes section. It shows that the batches used in Denmark, which are represented by the points in the graph, essentially break down into three groups. The green batches, which have a moderate or moderately high level of adverse events associated with them, these represent the batch that was the most used in Denmark, with somewhat, uh, somewhat or over 800,000 doses have been administered. These 800,000 doses are associated with around 2,000 suspected adverse events, which gives a reporting rate of one suspected adverse event per approximately 400 doses. As Diker puts it, that's not a small amount if we compare to what we know otherwise from influenza vaccine. According to Diker's calculation, the green batches account for more than 60% of the Danish sample. There are then the blue batches, which appear to be associated with an extraordinary high level of adverse events. As Diker notes, no more than 80,000 doses of any of the blue batches were administered in Denmark, speculating that these batches may perhaps have been quietly pulled from the market by public health authorities. Despite that, these batches had as many as 8,000 suspected adverse events associated with them. 8,000 out of 80,000 doses would give a reporting rate of one suspected adverse event for every 10 doses. And Diker notes that some of the blue batches are indeed associated with a reporting high, a re sorry, a reporting rate of as high as one suspected adverse event for every six doses. On Diker's calculation, the blue batches represent less than 5% of the total number of doses included in the Danish study. Nonetheless, they are associated with nearly 50% of the 579 deaths recorded in the sample. Finally, we come to the most interesting part, and that's the yellow batches. Based on Diker's calculations, the yellow batches represent around 30% of the total, Diker notes that they include batches comprising some 200,000 administered doses, which are associated with literally zero suspected adverse events. As Diker puts it, malicious. Observers might note that this is how placebos would look. And malicious observers might be right. For Diker and Mastic compared the batch numbers contained in the Danish study with publicly available information on the batches approved for release, and they made a very startling discovery that almost none of the harmless batches, unlike the green and yellow ones, appear to have been subject to any quality control testing at all. Hmm, seems odd and strange. So, who could have dropped the ball? Looks like it's the German regulatory agency, the Paul Ehrlich Institute, PEI, named after the German immunologist and Nobel Prize winner, Paul Ehrlich, as they're responsible for quality control of all Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine supply in the EU. Now in the EU, the actual legal manufacturers of the vaccine 
as well as the marketing authorization holder, is the German company BioNTech, not its more beloved and revered American partner, Pfizer. Diker and Mastic found that the PEI had tested and approved for release all the blue batches, the overwhelming majority of the green batches, but almost none of the yellow batches, as if the PEI knew in advance that these batches were unproblematic. Maybe they're like Karnak. Mm, these, batches, these batches look good. Well, when you click on the link in the notes section in the original article, you'll see a slide from Diker's presentation during the Punkt Predovic interview. The title reads, Which batches from the Danish study did the Paul Ehrlich Institute test and approve for release? In the PEI column of each of the tables, Ja means, of course, that the batch was tested. Nein means that it was not. Of interest is the fact that only the first batch in the yellow table was tested. The caption under that table reads, the PEI did not generally regard testing of the harmless yellow batches as necessary. As Diker puts it, with notable restraint during the interview, this would support the initial suspicion that they are maybe in fact something like placebos. Who would or could have thought placebos would ultimately be better than the real thing, huh? Anyway, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please post any comments you have in the comment section. You can always follow me in my Rumble and my Locals account. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. You can now also subscribe to my uh, Twitter account. I've started to get on Twitter. Anyway, like I said, check out my other videos as well, and you'll find the link in the notes section to the study, and I will see you next time.